guys, fellow makers, welcome down to the shop. I'm Bill, and today is the final epic part of our Skyrim Steel Armor build. Today we're getting everything strapped up and glued together and finishing this wonderful journey that we've been on for the last couple of weeks. This tutorial is part of a series we're doing with our friends over at Bethesda to help chime in the release of Skyrim Special Edition, which is out now. They wanted us to help you learn how to make some of your favorite armor and weapons from Skyrim. And today, we're going to finish the steel armor build by putting on all the straps and getting everything hooked up, put together, and on your body. Of course, if you're just jumping in now, you'll want to check out the first two parts that we did in this series, the foam fabrication and the painting. Go ahead on over there, check those two out, get caught up, and then come on back here and watch the final build. In the description of this video, you'll find a list of all the materials that we'll be using for this build, as well as some free blueprints, and people have already been downloading them, printing them out, and starting their own armor. I'm getting really excited to see everyone else turning out their armor. And, of course, if you start building this set, then I want to see it. Let me know on Twitter. And, hey, let the folks at Bethesda know that you're working on your own steel armor. Tell them I sent you. Okay, then, let's get to the build. I wanted the pauldrons to be removable, so they were attached to the chest armor using Velcro. The Velcro pieces were hot glued down to the foam. A strip was left exposed from the chest armor and that exposed portion was stuck to a pad on the bottom of the pauldrons. The armored belt girdle was easily one of the most complicated parts of this armor build with multiple layers of armor and belts. We designed all the pieces to come apart for travel using more of that Velcro. Behind the scenes, a belt was made using nylon webbing, slides, and a large plastic buckle. Some nylon belt loops were glued to the front of the girdle to hold the sliding belt straps to the front of the girdle and those belt straps were then glued to the back armor part. Strips of velcro were also attached on the front armor panels to be used as a means to temporarily attach the hip armor. Finally, the bottom strips of waist armor were attached to everything else using more velcro. This part of the build was extremely complicated, so feel free to get creative with how you solve it for your own build. For the straps and belt, you can use a real belt from the thrift store or make one yourself using vinyl or leather, which is what we did. Vinyl fabric strips were glued down to more of that nylon webbing to make a long strap. The two unpainted foam hip pieces had vinyl circles glued to the top of them and then a strip glued around the side of it to make it look like a big piece of leather. Using an automotive vinyl spray paint and some leather paints, this light tan fabric was painted to look like a darker, more worn leather. This fake belt was then attached to the hip armor using Velcro. The last bit here was to glue on the faux belt buckle to the front and add some decorative foam strips to our non-functional belt. To protect our hands, we found some nice leather gloves at the thrift store and used them to finish the gauntlets. Step one was to cut off the fingers. Step two was to add a little bit of super glue to make sure that the seams and stitching wouldn't come apart where they were cut. The glove armor was then glued down to the back of the hand using contact cement. This armor has a bunch of fur accents all over the place. The shapes I needed were cut out using some nice scissors from the back of the fur cloth. Any extra fur I didn't need was pulled or trimmed away. If possible, I tried to cut down to the fabric so that the glue would adhere to that and not just loose fur. Then, the fur could be hot glued to the back of my foam armor pieces. This was repeated all over the armor wherever it needed some fur. Awesome. Okay. Shoes can be pretty tricky, and this build was no exception. If you can find your own leather boots or moccasins, then go ahead and buy a pair, but we couldn't find any in time, so we made our own. We ended up using an old pair of running shoes. For ease of use and getting them on and off, the laces were replaced with elastic. We made a quick template for the boot cover using some scrap cloth. Once we were sure the cover would fit, the final cover was cut from some leather textured fabric and sewn together. This fabric was then glued down to the shoe using contact cement. The shoe armor was added to the shoe using a strip of elastic. The elastic was stitched to a piece of nylon webbing, and then that webbing was glued down to the shoe armor. This is a great way to make shoe armor that is removable. 
For the shin armor, another test fabric pattern was created. This cuff piece was cut and sewn together and then we did a test fitting to make sure it would fit over my leg. The same faux leather cloth was used here for the final piece. This sock armor of sorts was then hot glued into the cuff armor above the shin armor. To attach the shin plate, thrift store purse straps were cut up and attached to the armor. We added some slides and buckles so that it could be adjusted to the size of my leg. You could also achieve a similar functionality with Velcro. The shirt and pants were super simple. We bought them online. These were mostly covered by armor, but we made sure they were at least brown so that they blended in with everything else. If you'd like to go a step further, you could even use some acrylic paints to weather it and make it look all dirty. The last touch was the skirt that goes under the thigh armor. The base of this was cut from some dark faux leather vinyl fabric. To attach it to the armor, Velcro was sewn to the top of the two skirt pieces to stick them to more Velcro inside of the bottom parts of the belt armor. To hem the edges of the fabric, I simply used hot glue and rolled the edge over. For the detail straps, more of that lighter vinyl cloth was painted up and cut into thin strips. I laid out where the strips would go on the skirt pieces and then tacked them all down using more of that handy hot glue. Finally, I traced out where the thigh armor parts would go, and then I brushed on a couple layers of contact cement onto the face of the vinyl and onto the back of the foam armor. Once it was all dry, I pressed the parts together, bonding them forever. That is all the fabrication. Here's a rundown on how I put all of the armor on. First, the shin socks slide over my legs, and then I can step into the shoes that slide on because they just have elastic. The shin armor can then be strapped around the bottom part of my legs. For the girdle, I can step into it, slide it up my legs, and then buckle the real belt on the inside of the armor. Once that's secure, the outer faux belt can then be Velcroed into place. The chest armor goes on just like a normal vest and Velcros together along the seam right up the middle of my chest. The skirt pieces are then stuck on to the belt girdle part using the Velcro. The gauntlets are easy, they just slide right onto my forearms, and then the gloves go on the way that gloves go on. And finally, the helmet goes onto my noggin and I'm ready to face the dangers of Skyrim. That is it! The armor is all done and I can wear it and run around and have a good time slaying Draugrs and dragons and saber cats and all the other demon beasties in Skyrim. I'm really stoked about how my armor turned out and I'm really excited to see how your armor turns out. And I do hope you guys give this one a try. Like I said, all the materials and blueprints are listed down below. Know that you can modify this build to suit your own needs, your own building style, whatever materials you have, and your own budget. So give it a shot and happy building. And hey, Skyrim Special Edition is out. I don't know about you guys, but I'm really excited to put on my armor and go start playing around in Skyrim again. Of course, if you've got your own memories in the world of Tamriel, be sure to share them online with the hashtag Skyrim Memories. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video series and of course the rest of our videos. If you have any questions about this build or really any other build, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to help you out. Along with this armor build, we built Wuthrad here and of course the horned steel helmet. We have videos for both of those right there along with the first two videos in this armor series. If you're new to the channel, be sure to go subscribe. We've got more videos coming out every single week to help you build your next prop or costume project. And of course, if you want to get more into foam armor and prop making, head on over to punishprops.com slash foamsmithing for the rundown. Thank you all again so much for watching and I will see you in Sovngarde.